Welcome back, adventurers. In this video, we are going to be talking about handoffs. Handoffs is kind of the second major bucket that you can fit your gambits into. This all sounds like a bunch of jargon if you haven't listened to some of the previous videos, but to recap very quickly, once you decide you're going to send somebody on a fun treasure scavenger hunt adventure, your first step is to figure out the beginning ending, then lock down all the anchor points in the middle. These are the things you're going to send people to, the places, the stops. And then the goal is to figure out how you're going to push your player along. Uh, are they going to get a clue? Is there a map? Is there someone's going to tell them something to do? What what sends them to the next stop? And I like to call those gambits, risky maneuvers. Now, out of all the gambits, they can be fit neatly into three basic boxes. Dead drops, which we covered in the previous video. Handoffs, which we're doing today. And decodes, which I'll hit in a later video. Now, handoffs is exactly what you think it would be. It is a human being physically giving instruction or an envelope to your player. The basic way that we're gonna break down handoffs is in two different parts. The first one is familiar handoffs. And these are handoffs that are done by somebody who is very close to you uh, or a, a friend or family member. When somebody hires me to build an adventure, I usually hire two, three, four people to help me run this whole thing. Oftentimes, I'll hire an improv actor that will act as somebody handing off an envelope. Sometimes, we'll bring in friends and family. But these are the familiar handoffs. These are handoffs that are even less risky because it's you or somebody you know who is usually, or at least hopefully, intimately familiar with the player um, or at least the goal. You know, you might be billing this thing as a tense secret agent style adventure or a whimsical fun adventure and it's really important that the person making that handoff is on brand with whatever feeling you're trying to elicit if you're doing a secret agent themed adventure you're going to want somebody who kind of saunters up to the person and whispers in their ear and says i was instructed to give you this and then hands them some wax sealed envelope or some package or something and just walks away silently you don't want someone that's like hey happy birthday hope you're having fun here's this that doesn't feel the same and this is why familiar handoffs work so well is because you can work with people uh, prior to to make sure that they're eliciting the feeling you want um, one of the nice things with familiar handoffs is you can do something that i love doing where i'll in the previous stop they get an envelope that basically says go to this restaurant and sit at this bar and wait for further instruction or go to this park and stand next to this lamppost and wait for further instruction and then when they arrive they kind of have to squirm for a little bit and they're looking around they don't know who's in on it is that person that's jogging with their dog is that the person is it this person sitting over here and it's fun it, there's no puzzles there's no challenge but the feeling that it elicits is amazing. And you definitely have to do that if you have the opportunity. Another thing you can do with familiar handoffs is phone calls. And I love incorporating phone calls, especially for really meaningful events. So a marriage proposal or a 40 or 50th birthday party when you want to involve people. And especially if you're watching this during the whole global pandemic that's going on, you have a lot of people that do not want to leave their homes or come face to face. Totally cool. I'm in that boat stay home, just survive. But they still wanna be involved in this. And so with these handoffs, you have two cool, cool, cool opportunities. One is a phone call where they arrive at a statue and they're told to wait for further instructions and they're looking around and they're trying to figure out who is in on this, who is gonna hand them the, ne the next envelope. And all of a sudden their phone rings and it's their best friend from college that says, Hey, Ashley, um, happy birthday. I was told to call you at this time. Listen to these directions. And then they literally can give step-by-step -step directions. Okay, you should see a red door. Do you see that red door about 20 feet east? Excellent. Go through that red door. It's unlocked. Once you arrive in that red door, you're going to walk down a hallway and you're going to take the second door on the right. And then once you go through that second door, you're going to take 15 steps. You're going to look left and you're going to look up 
and you'll find what you need. Happy birthday. Click. Such a cool experience, right? And then this person gets to be involved. It does take some setup. You need to have somebody there at that statue ready to text Ashley's friend. Ashley's friend will have already been like pre-notioned, you know, it's probably going to be around two o'clock. You're going to get a text. Here's your script. You are welcome to chat or about this. But the most important thing is that this is said. Red door, hallway, second door, turn left, look up. Has to happen. Um, another thing you could do if maybe they're in a different country or in a different part of the world and it's midnight and you're doing this thing at noon and they're not going to be awake, they can pre-record a video message or an audio message, but video's easy with phones. Here I am doing it on my phone. Where they have that video message that gives that same thing and they just send it to you and then you just text it when it happens. So that's another cool way to do a familiar handoff, whether friends or family or whatnot can be present. It does take setup and coordination, especially if they're going to do a live call. But man, it's a cool experience. And they get to connect with their friend. It's kind of a win-win for everything. It also, if you're, if they're maybe running a little bit ahead of schedule or running behind schedule, it helps you dictate to make up time or add in more time where maybe they're five minutes ahead of schedule and they arrive five minutes and you just make them wait. You know, they squirm a little bit. Or if they're behind schedule, as they're walking up to the spot, they get immediately intercepted. So it's a way to help make up time. So that's familiar handoffs. And that brings me to unfamiliar handoffs. This is when you're utilizing a restaurant or a shop or some business that has an ulterior motive to this. They're not doing this because they're really excited about your proposal or your surprise party, whatever it is, even if they are. They're doing it because they're a business and they are going to have some type of benefit from this, oftentimes with the same restaurant or bar um, example, where you're gonna send somebody to a restaurant where the host is gonna say, oh, we've been expecting you, come right here, and they go sit down at a table, and maybe there's a puzzle, or maybe they just eat, and everything's been paid for, and it's just a nice experience. But when you're using restaurants, you can't rely on restaurants or shops or businesses to be as, on point as you would with a familiar handoff very you know you 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 don't know if the host or hostess is going to be willing to play a role in your secret agent themed adventure and you know completely turn it on and act coy or act in a different way because it might just be some kid from high school with no theater or acting experience or anything so with those you kind of just have to be okay with the fact that the restaurant is never going to quite know they're not going to be fully in you can go and you can talk to the manager and you can get everything set up before and you still run a risk that they don't even know who the host is going to be that day. And when you arrive 20, 30 minutes before your player does and you talk to the host or hostess and you say, hi, I talked to John, the manager. Did he tell you what was going on? And they're just like, uh, no. And then you have to rehash the whole thing. Make sure you tip them, which I love doing because it ensures that they're going to be kind of jazzed about it. But Oftentimes they can't hold it together. You know, they're like excited about it. They have like a big grin when the player walks up and they're like, ah, and you're like, oh God, you know? So there's definitely pros and cons to familiar and unfamiliar. One of the recommendations I have with unfamiliar handoffs uh, is to utilize passwords. Uh, I did a previous video talking about how great passwords are, how they can help free things up, but it's even more so with unfamiliar handoffs because then you, you have this, the high school host, hard to rely on them. They're completely unfamiliar with this whole thing, even, you know, when they woke up this morning. It's easy just to say, here's the deal. Someone's going to show up. They're going to give you this password. It's river. I don't know, whatever. And then all you need to do is just take them to this table and here's $10. Thank you. Good on you. Uh, and so what it does is it absolves them from having to worry or re recognize the picture that you gave them or whatnot. So passwords are really great. Another thing with the unfamiliar handoffs, since they're usually involving restaurants or businesses of some sort, is you can potentially pay to have a sectioned off area, a private back room where you have a huge puzzle or some big thing or the ending. Uh, that's kind of the nice thing about using businesses and restaurants, oftentimes you just throw money at it and it gives you lots of flexibility and lots of space. Remember, you don't have to just keep hitting your player over and over again with puzzle after puzzle because it's not a fun experience. 
So harking back to go here and wait for further instruction or go here and enjoy your meal. And then once you're done, go here. It's not a bad thing to do that. In fact, I strongly, strongly recommend it because this whole thing is about making for a fun experience. And oftentimes people get lost in the, you know, I want to have as many puzzles and challenges and they get lost in that and they lose sight of what's fun and what's not. And so that's really, really important to, to figure out the feeling you're trying to elicit and understand that the feeling can be created without any complex puzzles or weird challenges and just being sent somewhere and not know what happens next is a cool experience. So that's all I got for handoffs. I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have a favorite thing you love to do or a favorite handoff, put it in the comments. Or if you have any questions, also put those in the comments. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, I do have a Patreon, so if these are particularly useful and you want to support a, uh, if you want to support an event planner during a global pandemic, I'll always take the help. And for my intrepid adventures, I do have some goodies when I do videos that talk specifically about different puzzles or ciphers. I'll always build out a couple for you just so you can use them without having to, you know, do it yourself. Otherwise, I hope you guys have fun incorporating handoffs into your adventures. And until next time, happy building.